for today's video we're taking a look at a Lagomassino Numeria model 9203 mechanical calculator made in Italy in the 1950s or 60s. I actually bought this machine to use as spare parts for my electric Lagomassino which needed some spare parts for the register. I'll put a link to that video on screen about now. But as is often the case it seemed a shame not to at least try to get this one going. So the first thing to do is to remove the carriage. There's a rod that runs the entire width of the carriage which is held in place by a screw on the left hand end and it has a screw head on the other end so you can hold it still as you undo that screw. Normally it's a simple case of withdrawing this rod but this one looks well rusted in place so we'll have to see how we get on. So I'll unscrew the retaining screw on the left hand end and so far so good, that came out nice and easily. And next I'll see if I can rotate the rod to free it up a little. And no, uh, it really doesn't feel like that's going to budge at all. I don't want to give it too much force because breaking it really won't help at all. So I think I'll give up at that and put a bit of penetrating oil on it and leave it for a while. And while I've got the oil handy, I may as well oil up all the moving parts in the register because it's completely seized at the moment. And that's the last of the oiling done, so I'll let it sit for a day or two and then try again. OK, that couple of days actually turned into a couple of months or so. But I finally managed to get the carriage off the machine. The rod that secures the carriage passes through these two bearing surfaces and slides with the carriage, or at least it should slide with the carriage. I managed to free up one of the bearings, but the other one was seized solid, and when I tried to rotate the rod the bearing just rotated with it because its fitting to the side frame wasn't very tight. There was very little access, just this little opening in the case, but I managed to cut a groove in the outside of the bearing in an attempt to stop it rotating using a screwdriver. That didn't work, but while puzzling over the problem I discovered that the case can be split by lifting a hidden catch. Once the case was apart I was able to heat the bearing and finally withdraw the rod. But I still couldn't get the carriage off because this indicator arm that reaches over the top was preventing me from lifting the carriage off in the normal manner. So I had to find the second case catch, release that and then, finally, I managed to remove the carriage and also the rest of the case. The carriage itself is, as you'd expect, all jammed up. One or two of the number wheels rotate but that's about it. On a casual glance it appears to be complete so I'll just put it on one side for the moment. I've done a little bit of work on the main mechanism. This bar at the back was seized preventing the machine from rotating but after a bit of heat and oil on the pivot bearings it's now working fine. The cam followers on the end of these side bars were also seized and again these were freed up with a bit of heat and oil and then a bit more heat and a bit more oil. Looking at the side of the machine, I'll just insert the handle. There's a little spring-loaded latching pin that you need to pull out to insert or remove the handle. Anyway, all of the bearings have now been oiled and the main drive assembly is free to rotate as it should do. Most of the intermediate gears and carry levers above the main pin drum appear to be free and nothing looks like it's bent or broken, so that's pretty good. This machine uses a drum with movable pins which works a bit like the step drum system used by the Munro calculators rather than the wheel with pins protruding from the edge as used in the traditional pinwheel calculators. I'm sure it won't have escaped your attention that some of the keys have seen better days. They're a two part plastic piece with the number cast in a contrasting colour to the rest of the key but in several cases the outer plastic has crumbled away leaving just the number and in many of the ones that are left they fall apart as soon as you touch them. Some of the keys are working fine, for instance there's a handful of fives that are working ok here, but then there are several other keys stuck solid, like this 8, well that one's not budging, or the 9, or the 4, 3, 2, 1. 
so the keyboard will probably need to come apart and to do that all the keys will need to come off so I suspect there will be a fair few casualties. So we've skipped forward in time again and now all of the keys are freed up and working. As expected several more of the key tops have fallen apart so I'll need to replace some or maybe all of them at some point in time. This far column isn't latching down as it should do so I'll need to get the cover plate off to look at the latching mechanism beneath. And I'll also need to straighten the rod for the carriage shifting knob because that has been bent at some time in the past. So I've got a few more of the key tops still to get off and I've made myself a little levery thing that I can insert under the key and then pop a bit of bar under that which allows me to just lever the key off carefully. But even doing it like that you can see the one I've just done has split into two pieces. Anyway I'll finish off removing the key tops and then take a look at removing the cover plate. Right, that's all of the key tops removed. I do have a plan for replacing the keys. This is an early prototype 3D printed key. I'll need to decide whether I'm going to 3D print all of the keys, which is 100 keys, or whether I'm going to utilise some of the existing keys that are still OK. The difficulty will be, if I am going to use some of the existing keys, I'll need to try and colour match the 3D printed keys so they look the same. I'll think about that later in the project. Anyway, now to remove the keyboard. The keyboard section is a self-contained unit which is held in place by four screws, one on each corner. Two of which are hidden behind rubber bungs, which sit in a cup-shaped thing. Then there's another screw towards the back of the machine, in line with the rear of the keyboard and then that's repeated on the other side of the machine. The final screw is here. You might struggle to get at that without removing one of the gears and if you're going to remove the gears make sure that all of the timing marks are aligned before you put them back. And also on this gear, which is the one you'll need to take off, it has the little springy bit of metal that operates the anti-reverse rotation device. So once you've started moving the machine in one direction, you can't then move it back in the other direction until you've completed a full rotation. But I've already taken the gear off and left the screw loose enough to remove from an angle with the gear in place. And that's the screw removed. And now, with the four screws removed, the keyboard section simply lifts off like that. OK, now that we have the keyboard on the bench, it's time to remove the top plate. Firstly, the carriage shifting rod needs to come out. I've already straightened this, so it now comes out nice and easily. After that, there are six screws to remove. There's a small round semi-captive nut on the underside of each screw that has a slot which grips the chassis rails. They have a tendency to fall inside the keyboard as you remove them, so try to keep hold of them. Once the six screws and nuts are removed, there are three more screws on the underside which screw into posts protruding from the top plate. When you refit these screws later, be careful not to trap the felt pads on each key stem. And finally we're ready to take the top plate off. It can be a bit tricky and need a bit of a jiggle, but that's nothing compared to putting it back together again. I'm sure they had a really good method in the factory, but I'm not privy to that. So if you're planning to dismantle one yourself, be ready for a big struggle getting the hundred key stems back through the holes in the cover plate. Anyway, it's off now, so we can get on with fixing the latching problem inside. So now we're looking at the front left corner of the keyboard where the number one key can be locked down to act as an addition counter. This metal plate is supposed to slide across and lock the key in the down position but the plate is bent and was sitting beneath the number one key and holding the latching bar for that entire column out of position. The only way the plate has got bent like this is if someone has tried to dismantle the keyboard using excessive force before removing the carriage shifting rod. 
If we take a closer look at the latching system, in normal operation, as you press one of the keys, this spring-loaded bar should latch the key in the down position, and it'll stay like that until you press the keyboard clear button, which will slide this plate across, releasing all of the columns at the same time. Like that. Or you crank the handle without the repeat engaged, or you press the zero key for that column, which will clear a single column. Right, the keyboard is now back together, and predictably enough, it was a bit of a struggle. Anyway, the leftmost column is now latching, as it should do, and also if I press the number 1 key and slide the lever across, the number 1 key stays down when I press the clear button to act as an addition counter, and then when you release the lever and press the clear button again, the number 1 pops back up. So now everything's working in the main mechanism, it's time to take a look at the carriage. I've already done a bit of work on this. If I turn the clearing handle forwards, the counter wheels will rotate, and if I turn it backwards, the output register wheels turn. The counter wheels are also now free to rotate on their shaft, although I did find a broken spring pin on the second wheel, leaving it spinning freely. I've saved the parts and I'll make a replacement, but it could be a fun job fitting it. There are still several seized wheels on the output register shaft, which will need careful freeing off. And also, the split clearing mechanism, which should slide when I move this lever, is also rusted solid, so the whole thing is going to have to come apart for cleaning. Anyway, I think this video has gone on for long enough, so I'll save the register strip down and repair for part 2, which will hopefully follow in a week or two. There may even be a part 3 by the time I've made the new key tops, a clearing handle for the register, and also some feet. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get a notification when the next video is released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.